As you see the news today, inflation was down by 1.1%. Uh, many people are talking about it. I have to say it was predicted to come down. Um, and now there's this whole conversation about whether or not government uh, are doing measures that are kind of having this impact. Jeremy Hunt, I think I can show you uh, a tweet that he put out today, basically taking credit for it coming down. Uh, he's saying the decisive action we've taken to tackle inflation is working. Uh, the rate now stands at its lowest level, level since February last year. He says, whilst price rises are slowing, we're not at the finish line yet. Uh, and just to recap, it came in July 6.8% and that versus 7.9% in June. Rishi Sunak's uh, one of his five-point plans uh, was to half inflation, bring inflation right down. We're still massively over the 2% target. Connor, what do you make to it all? Uh, I'm kind of sick of the discourse of it because, one... Most people don't know what inflation actually means because the government has misled them into thinking it means price rises, when no, it's actually the rate of change based on the amount of money that's in the system. And the reason that inflation's gotten worse is because they injected lots and lots of money in the system. And at the same time as doing uh, the interest rate hikes, the Bank of England is the only bank in the world that's also trying to sell off its bonds. So it's playing a really risky strategy, considering we're so reliant on the American and Chinese economies as well. And the second one is most of the stats are just dishonest because... In the CPI, they've taken food and fuel out of the basket of goods that they're calculating. You know, the, the main necessities that the people have. House prices have fallen a, a minuscule fraction of a percentage. They're still, compared to 20, 30 years ago, Yeah, but it depends on which measure high. you look at, because you've got uh, CPI, you've got RPI, you've got core inflation. Mm. So different measures include different things. Some will put your housing in, some will take your food in. So there are all different measures, depending on what basket of goods, so to speak, people want to measure. But they're representing it off of the CPI and claiming victory when, as well with the fuel prices, let people not forget, they're still using their taxes to keep the energy price cap in place. So we're still paying for it by the back door. So they haven't really done much except slowly clean up their mess at a less um, fast rate that is... That is plundering our pocketbooks than before. So I don't think we should really be impressed by this. It's just mismanagement all the way down. What do you feel like at home? Do you feel like uh, your price pressures are easing? Do you feel like you've got a little bit of extra cash? Uh, do you feel any different at all? Or do you still feel that massive squeeze? I still feel like a lot of people are taking the absolute Michael when it comes to how much they're mm. uh, raising their prices. I am absolutely convinced. And I do say this as a capitalist. I am a capitalist. I do uh, believe in profit and all the rest of it. But... I am convinced that people are just hiking profits because they know they can get away with it. Yeah. Anyway, what do you make to the whole inflation chat? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up on that point you just made there in a second. But firstly, uh, for people out there, so we've got 6.8% um, inflation right now. Rishi Sunak is saying it's going to be 5.3% by the end of the year. As you've already said, the target from the Bank of England is, of course, 2%. And the unspoken rule is, or actually the very much spoken rule, but perhaps it's going to be put on the back burner now, is that for as long as inflation is above 2%, the base rate of interest goes up. Presently, and this matters for anybody watching who has a mortgage, or even who rents and your landlord has a mortgage, presently the base rate of interest is 5.25%. What it really means is that we should be seeing further rate rises all the way through to next year if the Bank of England do what they're meant to do. So we are maybe looking at a base rate of interest of seven, seven and a half percent in the first several months of 2024. That's not good news for the average punter. But the way that Jeremy Hunt talks about this, you think he would have, you know, he's he's delivered the, the golden fleece. Uh, and important to say what's happening now with regards to falling inflation is, as you said, price rises are slowing, but they are still rising. And the thing about profiteering, so true. What we've seen really over the last 18 months is Companies say to their employees, sorry, inflation's 10%. We can't give you a pay rise in line with inflation. Will you take a pay rise of 5%? And they say to their customers, look, inflation's 10%. We've got to put our prices up by 12%. So they're screwing the consumer, screwing the employee, often to the benefit of shareholders. Very, very, very bad. And it's very distasteful, I think, to see Jeremy Hunt crowing the way he is. Why? Because if I was Jeremy Hunt, um, because I actually don't think that they can take credit because I don't think that it's anything that they're doing particularly, yeah. which is bringing it down. Yeah. But if I was Jeremy Hunt, I'd be sitting there thinking, hang on a second, when anything goes wrong, so when these inflation figures uh, are going the wrong direction, everyone instantly will point the fingers at Sunak, at Hunt. So if I'm going to take it when it's, it's going in the wrong direction, I'll be damn sure I'm going to take it when it's going in the right direction. Yeah. That's what I'd be thinking if I was him. Yeah, uh, uh, look... It goes back to what I was saying with regards to Sunak uh, 
sort of speculating on it being 5.3% at the end of the year. We're in August. We're still in the summer. It's a bit like saying, look, if Manchester United win all their games between now and December uh, 24th, they'll be top of the Premier League by Christmas. If, maybe, perhaps. On the substantial points, though, we still have far higher inflation than somewhere like the United States, and that is because of long-term government failure on things like energy and food security. So I know what you're saying. I think you're right. They're politicians. That's what they do. One could argue that's what they have to do. But it still leaves, I think, a bit of a sour taste in the mouth. I think Jeremy Hunt thinks he has to do this as well because there was a report recently that came out that said, alongside Rishi Sunak, probably not going to the UN in October, near Conservative Party, Party conference, he might coincide conference with a cabinet shake-up and there were rumours that Hunt's job might be on the chopping block because he's done basically nothing. So he might be trying to come out and give himself good PR to not get kicked out of the Chancellor position. Or maybe they're just all trying, because this is the criticism as well that people um, will give, for example, to people like Sunak that they're not these big front-footed, uh, kind of ballsy, out there, um, you know, like rambunctious. They're just kind of behind the scenes, keeping their heads down, keeping things ticking along, and maybe that's what British politics needs for a little bit. I don't think so. I think they're acting like the min middle managers of a global constituency as everyone's kind of going into decline. And, and this is, this but is also... what do you want them to do then? Um, get their fingers out of the mismanagement of the economy. Stop just bringing people over so they can count per head increased rates of GDP and factoring in the... Because government spending's factored into the GDP, keep raising taxes so that they can look like they're growing their way out of a problem because growth is all they care about, but they can't actually deliver growth. So it's just a game of optics. I'd, I'd quite like them to stop gaslighting the public and taxing me to death. Uh, do you feel gaslit? I think, there's something to, I think there's something to that. And I also do think it's the time for bold solutions, Michelle. You know, you said rambunctious. I, I think we need somebody with a bit more of your personality type than somebody like Jeremy Hey, Arnott. careful what you wish for. Imagine <laughs> me in charge of the country's uh, purse. Good boy. Well, you know, OK, but maybe not quasi quarting, but, you know, I think there's a, there's a happy medium. And I think, look, something like VAT cuts, I've said it before on the show, a 5% cut to VAT for 12 months would help so many small businesses out there. But that, something that small... Um, which wouldn't really cost the earth, but it would really help so many small and medium-sized businesses out there, is not even in the conversation. Now, you might say, well, we can't do it, we shouldn't do it, we can't afford it. It's not even in the conversation. Because as was already said, what these guys are in, in the business of is really just administering, I think, decline. The question is, how quickly? You know, Jeremy Hunt thinks he can administer slightly slower decline. I, I think this country can do better than that. You see, I do think, um, but I blame the media for a lot of the problems in this country. And I know that's a bit odd because I do sit in the media, but I'd like to think I operate slightly differently within it. But I think that when uh, people are bold and they do propose completely different change, the media jump on them straight away. There's this massive pile on there undermining what they're trying to do and all the rest of it. And then the, the politicians haven't got a backbone. They don't stand up and, and say, look, no, I'm sticking by my policy. This is what I'm going to do. Judge me at the ballot box at the next election. You know, I'll stand by my ideas. They don't. They panic and then they backtrack. And that's what I think happened with Quasi Quartan, because actually, whatever you might think of Liz Truss uh, and Quasi, they did have bold solutions. They did have points of difference. And they did have what some would say, like, radical solutions. I think, actually, it wouldn't have been such a, a bad programme for them to have done some of their ideas. I'll say that quickly. Look, I don't agree with lots of the things they were saying. What I will say is, I don't think the consequences, ultimately, would have been any worse than what we're presently seeing now. I don't think because we changed the chance from the PM, suddenly Britain has been set up in this fantastically different direction, much better situation we're facing in 2024. I think, broadly speaking, the downsides were as bad as what we're seeing already. And, hey, you know what? Maybe the upsides would have been better. So uh, they're not my cup of tea, but I don't think you're necessarily wrong. Bradley, my viewer, says, Michelle, I was skinned 10 years ago and I'm still skinned today. <laughs> so, so, no, I don't feel any different at all.